I'm Jackie Doucette, and I'm on a mission to discover exactly what life is like beyond retirement. Join me while I chat with people who've already done it, who've retired to something rather than from something. Let's find out together exactly what's waiting for us when we say goodbye to that nine to five. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Retirement. Today, I'm really excited because I have Lyle and Leanne McCabe from the Beach Travel Wine podcast with me. In case you haven't listened to their show and you don't know who they are, they're a retired Australian couple who are definitely making the most of their retirement. As they say on their show, they're traveling the world and telling us about it one wine at a time. Leanne and Lyle, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Jackie. Yeah, perfect. (laughs) I'm really excited to uh, hear about all the things that you guys are doing in retirement. But the first thing that I do, I always ask every guest is to tell us a little bit about who you are, where you came from, and how you ended up doing what you're doing now. Well, it could be a, a long story. So I'll give you the, the um, too long didn't listen version. Uh, we It's our second marriage. We've been together since 2015. So anything before that was raising children and having careers. And uh, since then, we, you know, we, we sold a business and retired and we started to travel. And then obviously 2020 happened. So we were able to travel where we, obviously we're Australian. You can hear by our accents. And we travel around Australia. And I convinced Lyle to um, do a travel podcast um, as a way of keeping a bit of a journal and sharing our stories with friends and family. And it's um, and now we just basically travel when we can and, and we live in the, the beach side place here. We're looking at the ocean now and, and when we're not travelling. And, you know, we, we just seem to have the, the perfect lifestyle, I think. Actually, and part of the, uh, I'll tell you a little story, the day we met, um, Liam was telling me, you know, our first coffee day, and Liam was telling me how much she wanted to go to Spain because she'd been learning Spanish forever. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to Spain then. So that's how it all started. <laughs> so she oh, didn't have awesome. to convince me too much. <laughs> no. So you, uh, you say you, you retired and then you started traveling. You don't travel full time right now. You, you kind of go back and forth, do you? Well, we, we don't travel full time because we have um, we sort of live where most people want to travel to in summer in, in Australia. So, you know, we're, we're at the beach and it's a beautiful spot. And um, somehow I've ended up with eight grandchildren. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> I know clever, aren't I? Yeah. Do, you want me to, do you want me to explain? No, it's okay. <laughs> it just sort of means that we can't, you know, like I, I couldn't be away for too long. Okay. Or permanently, so- you know. So how do you decide where you're going to go? Do you just throw a dart at the uh, at the map or what do you do? Well, pretty much. We, you know, I, I'm not a big um, plan, planner, like having a list to, to tick things off. Um, so, yeah, I guess Europe's always um, going, going to be somewhere we like to go because of the, Lyle, Lyle loves the history and, you know, I'm, I'm coming around that way as well now. And, um, you know, of course, it's good for us to travel in our winter, which is, you know, European summer. So that's, um, that, that's perfect as well. Um, yeah, we just, you know, we, we listen to other podcasts as well and, you know, do a bit of research and, and um, yeah, we just sort of, we don't, yeah, we don't really have a plan. Our next stop is New Zealand though. So we're going skiing, which, you know, goes against everything I say about the beach, but <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a lot of fun to go there though. Yes, we're going with Leanne's, uh, um uh, what is it, eight adults and eight children for the first week. And then the second week, Leanne and I are going to enjoy Central Otago Pinot Noir. Mm, it's a very big wine region. Yes. Wow. Eight children and eight adults. That'll be, uh, that'll be a heck of a time. I know, right? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, we'll podcast about it, don't we worry? <laughs> yeah. I'll be competing with her sons on the ski fields. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about how you do your podcast and and whether I guess do you do it just as you're going or do you do it when you come back? How do you decide what you're going to do? Well, a little bit of both, Jackie. We, um, you know, when when we sort of did our first one, we were sitting in our apartment in in Paris, and uh, we just got such a buzz when we'd done it, and we, you know, it was such an adrenaline high. It was just like, look what we've just done, and. Um, there was a couple of podcasts I listened to previous that 
they, they made it sound very simple, you know, and I know that you can be very technical and I just knew that if that was going to be the way I had to do it, it wouldn't work for me. So we, we found the easiest way to do it. And then we're, so while we're there, we'll, we, we will do a podcast, but we do one every week. So sometimes if you're in a city like Rome, which is our next project for, for a week, there's way too much in that for one podcast. So, um, you know, we, we, so we'll probably get, you know, th- three out of that. So we do start off, we started off in um, Venice and we podcasted about that. But as we went along, we were getting too many for places we've been, if that makes sense. So, um, so we're home now and we've still got probably six um, Italian podcasts to get through. Oh, oh that's amazing. Mm. But I think that's a, a really cool way to travel around the world and to share it with everybody because no one gets to see it or no one gets to experience it quite the same way as when you're right there doing it like at the time. And I think that's, you know, maybe even just walking around talking about it, that would be kind of a kind of a cool way to do it. Well, I mean, I take lots of photos that, you know, that's sort of my my um, hobby when, we, when, we do, when we're doing it. And that's always nice to look back through those. And that helps, you know, with, with, with putting the podcast back together as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, you, you may not have noticed, but I'm a little bit older than Leanne. And um, basically Leanne said that she decided just before she puts me into the nursing home, I'll have something to listen to. <laughs> and, and, look, to be honest, I said to Leanne actually the other day, I said, look, what you've got to realise is you're going to be able to leave a legacy <laughs> for your kids and for your grandkids now and for their kids mm. to listen to how great-grandma travelled the world. I think it's fantastic. I think it is too. I think it's an amazing way to do it. And the fact that you've got, you know, grandkids who will undoubtedly listen to it at some point, even if they're not too excited little, about it now. I've got a, uh, one of the, the little boys, that, um, Sebastian's four, and um, he, my, his mum sent me a message while we were in Italy and he said, um, he said, uh, how do Italians put their underpants on? <laughs> That's, I, I know, right? But it's just he's sort of connecting that you're, you're somewhere different, so they do things differently, and that was, yep. that, that was his sort of thing, oh, you know, I, yeah, when he was getting ready for daycare or whatever. So, yeah. and so they, they, they don't get the concept fully, but, yeah, they're getting there. I thought it was going to be a joke and he was going to say, well, one leg at a time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> to him, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really good. I, I read one of your blog posts about your trip in Spain and you were talking about the costs and breaking them all down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you try to keep your, your costs? I guess everybody does keep your costs to a minimum or do you like have a budget that you're going on when you retire or when you travel or do you just kind of, do what it takes. Uh, we just do what it takes. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, I mean. Within reason. We're not budget travellers. You know, we, we don't want to be backpacking and staying in hostels. That's not that's yeah. not for us. But we're not, we don't go business class fly. So, well, yeah. For instance, uh, we're sitting in Venice, right, and, the, and probably the silliest thing to do is to have a glass of wine sitting on the Grand Canal. We look at each other. That's what we're here for. We've yeah. got to have a glass of wine on the Grand Canal. It's going to cost you more than if you went a block back, but, you, you know, you, you've got to do those things. But, you know, with, within reason, we know how much we, sh- we should be spending. Um, Italy was a little bit more expensive than what we were, were hoping. Lyle's joking that I might have to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> but the other side of it too is I've found some of the, the best things we've ever done are probably the most expensive, like helicopter flights in Hawaii or helicopter flights in New Zealand, where you land on the, um, what the glacier, you, the glacier, and then you go you fly the rest down to Milford Fan. Mm-hmm. You'll never forget that. Yeah. And okay, no. it's a thousand dollars, but man, it's so worth it. Yeah, yeah. If you make that trip, you might as well do the things that are involved, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I, we talked about deciding where you're going. Do you ever uh, argue about where you're going to go next? No, I just do as I'm told. Okay, <laughs> good, right answer. <laughs> uh, we don't we don't argue no, but um, there are a few places um, that I sort of come up and he sort of gives me the look as if to say, you know, you're joking. And um, then we've got this huge big 
uh, atlas, you know, picture book that's probably, you know, so well-worn and you get it out. And I know you can Google stuff, but, you know, we love looking at, at the book and just seeing where, the, you know, what, what's what's actually in the country and where it's close to and, you know, like, um, you know, Albania is on my radar for some reason, you know, like it seems to be like, you know, uh, uh, and and it's not on Lyles, but you know, it's it's right on the the, the Mediterranean there. So maybe tell them the story yeah. about Mallorca. Oh well, yeah. Tell well, Jackie about the Mallorca. Yeah. When we went to Spain, one trip we um I because I do the planning and because it's because Lyles really you know pretty flexible and I'd I'd um you know booked all the accommodation ahead and we don't book what we're doing when we get there, but we like I like to know where I'm staying. I yep. think that's a girl thing and um. And, you know, I had it all booked and about two weeks prior, Lyle sort of sneaks up to me and says, you know, honey, I'd, re- oh, you know, I'd really like to go to Mallorca. I'm like, what do you mean you want to go to Mallorca? I've just booked, you know, everything's, you know. And he's like, oh, but, you know, I'd really, really want to. Can we do it? And I sort of huffed and puffed for a while. and um, Yeah, for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did um, manage to reduce you know, our stay in Valencia and then, you know, added four nights in, in Mallorca. And so we get to the airport in Valencia and um, the, the plane's not going to take off and we've got to get back off it. And, and I'm just still fuming and I'm like, ah, see? So, and then we hadn't paid, paid for luggage, which I, you know, I thought I had to pay extra mm-hmm. for that. And so I was, wasn't happy. And I was, you know, I told you so. Anyway, we walk into our hotel in Mallorca and I open the door and there's the Mediterranean and the you know the hills are rolling down into the sea and and I just turn around to say Lyle turn around to Lyle and say okay you know yeah, yeah I, I, I take it all back I'm I'm happy now <laughs> it's it's all worth it <laughs> it was all worth it yeah so have there been any places that you are sorry that you visited uh, the, yes and no we, we went to the Maldives for me, and I think it's probably it's so overrated, and that's coming from an Australian perspective because we live on an island surrounded by tropical beaches and you know the Great Barrier Reef and things. So, and it's such a long way to get there. But we went there to see um, a guy called Jimmy Barnes, who's Australia's you know living rock legend, and um, I've been a like, fan forever. And he was you know doing this intimate three concert thing you know at, at the Maldives, so that was fabulous. But I wouldn't go back. To the Maldives, you know, yeah. What about you? Um, I think everywhere we've been, I've learned something, you know, and I think, and Ooh, I'll, I'll be. Good answer. Well, I tell you, do. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, I probably wasn't uh, as keen on Mexico, and yet. And part of that was was the first time we'd actually done a tour. Mm. Normally, we do all the arranging ourselves, but we had a credit because of the COVID business. And we really came up with Mexico was because it was Spanish speaking. And um, so, so I can say, hola, yeah. muchas gracias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and, and it was all about the temples, like it was a, a, and a historical tour. So that part of it was fantastic. The tour guide was 15 out of 10. I mean, he was that good, but it was so rushed. Mm. And so for us, you didn't get to appreciate. I did, you know. They say, oh, you know, you you went to, you stayed in these towns, but we didn't really stay in the towns. We arrived there at seven thirty at night. We had dinner and went to bed and was up at six o'clock to get on the coach again. Which mm. some people love that, and there was people on that particular tour that they love it. Mm. But for us, we've been spoiled. Mm. Really, what it comes down to, that we love to slow travel, but the sites were fabulous. I think I find cruising the same as that. <clears throat> I thought going on a cruise would be a great idea because you could get to see so many different places, but you don't really because you land, like you say, you, you know, you, you dock at 5 p.m. and you're off again at 8 in the morning and you never see things and you don't have the yeah. time. And I if you get off, that. you've got 2,000 other people to try and navigate as well, yep. right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I, I like your answer, Lyle, the idea that you learn something, you get something out yeah. of everywhere, but it's not necessarily true that you'll go back. Yeah, I think it also imp- improves your compassion a fit, fair bit too because Australia here, we're blessed. I mean, really, we have no problems at all. And you go to a place like Mexico and um, you see that they have totally different perspectives on everything. And 
and you under and you get to understand why. And it also makes you realise how lucky you are again. Mm. It just reinforces it. Yeah, it does. So you've we talked about where you what you didn't like. What's the the place that you like the most so far? Pretty much everywhere. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a Spain girl. I just, um, I just, there's something about Spain when I go there. I just, I just love it. Um, and we've been to, I don't know, 50 different cities and villages all over Spain. And, wow. um, yeah, and and I think that's when you really get to know know, know all places as well. Um, I think um, we talk about this often, but I mm. think the thing that I love about Spain is they're really stuck to their culture. They still have the siesta. They, you go out at midnight and there's, you know, grandma and the, the adult children and the grandchildren. grandchildren. They're walking around and there's never an issue. There's never an issue with safety. There's tapas, there's, there's flamenco. Ta- you know, no, yeah, there's, there's bullfighting. Whether you like it or not, it's still part of their tradition. So the festivals <laughs> in their lives is huge and we went to a place called Santander, which is in northern Spain, and it was their week, uh, the, what do they call it, Grand Semana. Yeah, Semana Grande, which yeah. is party week. Yeah. and They was, hadn't had it for three years. They right? hadn't had it for three years because of the COVID. It was unbelievable. Mm. And Santan, Santander, it's a beach place, like it's a holiday destination. It was just fabulous. Yeah. Like there were DJs on the corner streets. <laughs> And there was live bands and it was just... Flamenco dance. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, so we come from a, a hospitality um, nightclub sort of, you know, when we were working first. So we love all that sort of stuff. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Spain. Of course, Australia, um, you know, and we speak to so many people when we're overseas and they're like, and, and everyone, and Lyle doesn't help. I get so cross with him, you know, because <laughs> everyone is terrified of the the huge you know man-eating spiders and the the you know the snakes that are gonna you know come up in your bed and kill you while you're sleeping and, and don't forget the crocodiles and the and the crocodiles and, and the shark and then and if that's not bad enough we make up these animals called drop bears you know which are you know koalas gone mad and um <laughs> you know and I, I was walking yesterday along the beach in my normal track and i'm thinking i should video this and show people you know like in my normal day I, I can't remember the last time I saw a snake or a huge spider, you know, like or or a sh- shark. <laughs> like you just, it's not part of our normal life, but people think it is, which is which is quite amusing, actually. So yeah, if we could convince people, you know, that it's really okay to come here, you know, we've survived this long. Um, yeah, well, there's only 27 million of us here, and we've, you know, it's the it's a land. Is uh, you're Canadian or American? Canadian. Canadian. Canadian, yeah. yeah. Well, you've got a huge country too, and there's yeah. parts of your country that aren't really inhabited. In, inhabited. Yep. Yep. I'm assuming that's because of the bears. <laughs> <laughs> that's because there's no our Wi-Fi. We population down because of the crocodiles. Such a sulk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to get to Australia at some point. I really want to see yeah. all the pictures I've seen, all the stories I've been told. Beautiful place yeah. to be. We'll look us up. We'll we'll show you around. We um, we live in probably I think the most perfect spot. We we've, we've got the hinterland, and we're right near where Australia Zoo is, where Crikey Steve Irwin, you know, um, has has the zoo, and we we're close to the capital of Brisbane, which is a beautiful city, and yeah, so it's a great spot. Wow. Mm. So, talk a, talk a little bit about how having the podcast has changed the way that you look at your travel or enhanced your life a little bit or, you know, just kind of what would it have been like without it, do you think? Uh, Lyle tells everybody that um, it it enhances our travel so much and it's enhanced our travel but also our relationship and we sort of fell into uh, the roles in, in the podcast so that's been really good for us but it's enhanced our travel because you know I'm now making sure I'm I'm getting the 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 photos for our photo book but also for to go with the the things we're going to talk about and Lyle does a lot of research um about you know the cities we're going to before we get there so you know, sometimes we've been somewhere and we come home we're doing a podcast about this was in the early days and Lyle would research it and he'd say listen to this I'm like, you know, like we were there and we didn't even know that, you know. So 
it makes us be much more aware of, of what we're going to see. And, and even when we get home, you know, for instance, we've, we're just doing a, a, a podcast about Florence sure. and um, one of the places we went to there is called the Pity Palace. And, um, you know, we did a tour and we learned all this stuff. But, you know, Lyle's been doing some more research to make sure we get all the facts right because that's what we like to do. And you, we've learned so much more about, you know, who actually lived there and, um, you know, the, the changes that I made. So it's really in, in, enhanced that as well. However, now we're like, well, we can't go back there because we've already done a podcast about that, so we've got to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, not because we don't want to go back. It's just that, you know. Time's limited. Time's, yeah, <laughs> especially for me. So, uh, and I, th- I think that's a, another part of it too is that, you know, we realise that, we're, you know, I've got a brother that's five years older than me and um, they've been, they've travelled all over the world. He worked offshore for 43 years. So he, in his job on, on, on oil rigs, he travelled everywhere. And he's got at the stage now where he doesn't want to travel anymore. Now, he's only five years older than me and he's travelled all his life and he loves it. But he just said to me, it's just too hard now. So for, our, for me personally, and I'm being a bit selfish, I want to get as much into it as I can. And, um, but, you know, as Leanne said, it's enhanced our relationship in that um, we've got something in common. Uh, we, we exercise a lot. So basically from, you know, early morning till about five o'clock, we don't really see each other when we're home because I'm doing my thing and Leanne's doing her thing. And, uh, but when we sort of get together at five o'clock, um, yeah, we have a couple of glasses of wine, of course. Um, oh, was it? You told me not to say that. Um, One o'clock. But um, yeah, it, you know, we we talk about the travels. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I said, you know, you, you're a lot more compassionate about, you know, how people do it. You understand cultures better. Um, so I, we, what we have learned is we, we people are reaching out now. You know, every day asking me. You know, even if it's like, what, which hotel did you stay at, or which area were you in, or. Um, you know, should we go here or, or I've just listened to your podcast on such and such and I've booked this. You know, we had a guy message me and say, we went to this restaurant that you, that Lyle talked about in one of your Spanish episodes. Well, it was actually Santander. It was. And, and he said, it was the absolute highlight of our trip. Thank you so much. I mean, when you get something like that, that, does, that just makes your heart sing, right? And yep. if we can inspire other people, that's the other thing, you know, we, we want to stay fit, healthy, do all the stuff we want, we need to do to, to travel. And we want to inspire other people to do the same. Now, not everybody wants to travel overseas. I understand that. But, you know, we could all travel a bit more even in our own backyards just to expand our, our minds and, and see something new and meet new people. Well, the other sort of a two, and I only just sort of it then, is the reason why we went at the restaurant in the first place oh, yeah. is because we could speak a little bit of Spanish. And the guys that were on the beach... We asked them, where's a good place to go and have coffee first? And they said, oh, just there. It's a Michelin star and it's great for lunch. So that was the reason we went. And we wouldn't know that apart from the fact that we can speak a bit of Spanish. So that helps as well. See, 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 see. I'm learning Spanish as well. Um, unlike you, I, I've fallen in love with uh, Mexico and yeah. Oh, right. All of my traveling, and like that's the place so far that I think that I want to go back to the most. But uh, I haven't done a tour there. That wasn't. Uh, I did do my own tours all around, and so, yeah. and that's kind of what I was going to um, ask about. You did this kind of flying tour of Mexico. How long do you normally spend in a place? Do you decide ahead of time, like one week or two weeks or a month? We we have found. You know, my, my plan was really to, to go and spend like a month somewhere and then do day trips. But what we what we sort of came up with is, you know, if, it, if it's a decent size sort of area and things to see around, we'll stay a week for sure. And um, and that actually reduces your accommodation costs a bit too, you know, um, because it, you stay a week, it's cheaper and you're not travelling as much. Every every time you travel, you're spending money, right, you know, on, on, on transport. And we always use public transport. Um, because we drive on the other side, the right, the correct side of the road, and um, we we can't do it over there because everyone's on the wrong side of the road, so it's so confusing for us, us, us people. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, see, um, yeah, so that's probably the I forgot what I was talking about. 
Ellen yes. roams out of the road. Yeah, roams out of the road. Yeah, yeah. But that's <laughs> how long do you stay? Why... Pardon? Yeah. I just said yeah, you were talking yes. about how long you stay. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably why we 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 stay a week, and uh, and that gives us downtime as well. You know, like we don't we don't need to be going out every day and seeing the big sites. You know, like um, like we tell everybody our favorite thing to do. What do we say? We walk out the door and we say either left or right. Which way we're going to go today? And off we go. And we've just found the most amazing places, had the best days ju- just doing that, you know. And sometimes you just need when you're travelling, like, could we, we try and go away for about two months um, at, at a go. At, and that's a long time. So sometimes us girls need to, you know, touch up our hair or, you know, just have a you, you know, well, have repair and maintenance day. We have repair and maintenance days, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that might just be that you just sit down and read a book in the courtyard or something. That's yeah. and, and And that just... Um, we, and we travel like that. We find that works for us. And we've generally find now that there's one day that we'll work on the podcast. Yeah, we do that. All right. Oh, that's a good yeah. idea. Mm. And then that way you're not you're not stressing about it all the time. You're, you know, you've got yeah. other things you can do. Yeah, yeah. Put yeah your feet a lot up, of the cities of and what we've sorry, what we've found in well, a lot, what I found in a lot of the European cities is everything's so close, like in his in the historical places, because when they built those things, they're not the cities they are now. Mm. So everything's so close. So if to, so they're all walkable, which is for me, I, I I just love that. And we and you see so much more when you're walking. Yeah, definitely. That's a that's a way to see anything, I think. You can mm. stop and go back if you think you've missed something. And you you know, if you're in a car or on a bus, it's way back there before you even know. Yeah, yeah, true. And we other thing, the other thing is we try and ask the locals, like we'll find a bar pretty much as soon as we, not, you know, that night, and talk to the locals about it, the places to go. And it's always interesting because they say, you don't want to go where the tourists go. That's the first thing I say. Well, we are yep. tourists, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, we find the barman. You yeah, know, they give you the, there's really a one particular uh, barman, Angelo, in... Um, in Rome. In Rome. And, of course... Yeah, Liam would, um, what was it, hog the conversation because he was absolutely the typical Italian male, good-looking man. <laughs> but he's probably spent an hour talking to us just about, now this is where you've got to go. Drawing maps and writing things So people want to help you. Oh. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question. And You must run into a lot of people and chat with a lot of people. That's one of the best things about travelling, I think, is... Well, Liam just got an email from some people we met in Noha today, this morning. Yeah, we met them in Spain last year. They're from from England. And, um, yeah, so so we sort of have, not regular, but, you know, just sending me messages and um, commenting on where we're travelling and, you know, that, you know, like how she's been inspired to go to some of the places that, you know, we talked to her about and that that sort of thing. So, yeah, it is definitely meeting people for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to tell the people listening to us today? about your podcast, about traveling, about anything at all? What would you like to say? Well, you know, the I guess the travel part of it is, as you know, I didn't sort of mention it earlier, you know, you know a lot of people sort of look at us and think, you know, we've got, for instance, we've got friends that j- there's just no way they're going to go overseas, you know. It's, it's just out of their their sort of realm of, of comfortableness. So, um, you know, I, I, but at least try and go somewhere new um, in in your backyard because, it just adds to your experiences. You see new things, you know, even if it's just going for, a, you know, a couple of hour drive. I mean, I'm sure, you know, in, in Canada, there's, I mean, I've seen beautiful scenery, you know, like why, why wouldn't you want to go out and, and explore that? Um, well, with our podcast, you know, like we're, we're 62 episodes in, so we've been doing, you know, at 62 different travel, you know, places and um, there's always some fun stories in, in there and, um, you know, the, if we've got podcasts from you know Mexico, you know the Spain and Italy, London, Paris, and all around Australia as well, and then next will be New Zealand. So there's there's something for everybody there. Um, yeah, we'd love to love to um, hear hear from your listeners, and if they want you know some suggestions about even starting their own, even if it's for themselves, you know, like it's such a fun way to um, record your, your your travels. It's great. And 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 Lan always wanted to be the coolest nana. So by traveling overseas, she can show off to the grandchildren. 
At so, least one oh, of the eight sure. think I am. I've got yeah, a few yeah, there. So, you know. <laughs> well, for sure, the coolest, Nana. You, you travel all over. You have a podcast. You're famous. I know. If we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, just about every conversation Lyle and I have starts with, I was listening to this podcast, you know, like it just, it's, we, we're just huge podcast listeners as well. So if you're not a, you know, you've just, yeah, you've got to tell people to listen to podcasts. Yeah. And I, and I generally listen to history ones. Um, and so that's just enhanced my love of history. So when you go to these countries and you've heard other people podcast about the history of it, you really do sense, mm. uh, you know, it just, it just becomes almost surreal to be there. And I think one other benefit of doing the podcast is, and it doesn't have to be a travel podcast, but the, the things that you learn, you know, like the, the technical side and, you know, it, as you know, that it can be frustrating and, um, you know, just getting getting it all together and getting it published, and then you know, we've got we've got a website that goes with it. So making sure you've got the the show notes and blog posts there, and um, and then okay, well, you know, I've got to promote it on the social media, you know, on the line. So you got to get on, <laughs> you know, you got to try and keep up with those sort of um, trends as well. If you know, if if you're into that sort of thing, so it's it's staying current with you know what, what's happening, and you know that I find that's good because. You know, my children are into business and working, and they they sort of use that those sort of mediums. So it's nice that we can share, um, you know, some that sort of stuff with them as well. And I think yeah. for me too, and I, I was talking to a guy yesterday, a really close mate of mine yesterday, and I said, the thing I love about travel and and just being not not being normal, not being in a box, like the, whether it be we're going snow skiing, you know, in two weeks' time, you know, I'm. Hitting to well, I'm 68 in September, and I'll give Land's boys, and they're in their 30s. I'll give them a run for the money on on the ski on the ski slopes. You know, we went and got our tickets, our scuba diving tickets, because um, we did a holiday uh, on the Great Barrier Reef, and wow. Land loved it that much. Mm-hmm. We went back and and did a five day ticket. You know, our ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Helicopter flights. Uh, Leanne's been learning Spanish for years and years and years. I've probably been learning now for three years. So I started when I was 65. So there's no reason you have to stop. Mm. You know, you can enjoy it as long as you've, you've got to keep healthy. That's the thing. And that's a, yeah. that's a bit of a lottery, really, at, at my age anyway. But uh, while I can still do it, we were in, Rome, uh, we were in Italy for eight weeks. I said to land in the Rome airport, I said, I could do another eight weeks. Hmm. You know, uh, it was so much fun. And Leanne and we says, get no, off, there's so grandkids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Those pesky grandkids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One day they'll be a bit older teenagers and they'll be like, oh, Nana. And then I'm like, okay, well, screw you. I'm going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I think it'll be Spain. Yeah, maybe. Somewhere else, Croatia, Portugal. There we go. Lots of places. Mm-hmm. 259 or something like that. How many places yeah. in the world? Different countries. Lots of places. Yeah, well, we won't we won't get to all of them and I that's okay. We, you know, we we'd rather like as I said, we just had eight weeks in Italy for us. We now know Italy, right? You know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we didn't we had friends that we met up with and they'd been to 16 countries in 18 days and they were just oh. they couldn't even remember where they'd been. You know, it's just that's not the way we but, just can't do it. That's not traveling, really. I mean, no, it's just, no. you know, buzzing it's, around the world. That's not actually no. learning or yeah. anything. Yeah. Mm, I agree. Well, your website is beachtravelwine.com, right? It is. Beachtravelwine.com. No, it's not. Oh, is it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's beachtravelwine.com. Yes. Okay. I'll make sure that that goes in the show notes. And I think Thank everybody you. should check it all out because your podcast is there and, and your photos and everything is so beautiful. You've got, you've done a lot of traveling. You've done a lot of uh, beautiful uh, chronology of your travels. Yeah, there is, there is a lot there. And if anyone's got any questions about where we've been, please send us a message. There's you know, email addresses or the social media or, or Beach Travel Wine. Um, yeah, ha- like so happy to help with any questions. Great. Well, it's been lovely talking with both of you. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. And I'm really, really happy to uh, get to know you even uh, uh, electronically. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we, we're definitely coming to Canada one day and you're coming out here. So let's hope we can catch up. 
or we'll catch up in Spain. Let's see. <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Jackie. Adios. It's a, it's Adios. a pleasure. It's a Adios. Pleasure. Adios. And that's it for this episode of Beyond Retirement. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready to start rocking your retirement? Head on over to www.beyondretirement.ca forward slash rocking it and sign up to plan out your own roadmap for retirement. Don't wait till it's too late. <laughs>